for people who have strong faith, it's sometimes difficult to understand those who don't believe in God, and it seems that popes are no different. Their desire for a better understanding has resulted in a conference uh, held at the Vatican to discuss unbelief or the lack of religious belief. An increasing number of people around the world, but especially in Western Europe and North America, define themselves as non-religious. Research suggests that about one in six people globally consider themselves to be religiously unaffiliated. That includes atheists, agnostics, and people who do not identify with any particular religion. This makes it the third largest faith grouping in the world, behind Christians and Muslims. The number of religiously unaffiliated people is expected to peak at 1.2 billion globally in 2040. Well, for many people, or for some, the sticking point can sometimes be, when it comes to faith, what actually happens when we die? And that's a discussion uh, being held across London at some cafes at the moment. Joining me now is Marae Hayden, who runs so-called death cafes, people coming together to discuss what happens after we die. Marae, this is, of course, a fascinating topic. Tell me about a cafe that runs a session like this. So basically, people um, come together. Often strangers come together to um, talk about death, dying and bereavement, um, have a cup of tea, a coffee, a cake, um, and just there's a free-flowing discussion about death and dying. What sort of things come up? All sorts of things. Um, it, it, there's, and every death cafe is completely different and every table is completely different. Uh, some people will talk about the meaning of life, some people will um, express feelings uh, and emotions that they've had that have been difficult around bereavement, but also some people will have really deep conversations about the meaning of life and, and how we face death and how that makes us really think about how we live our lives. And what's the atmosphere like? Because uh, I can imagine some people feeling a bit judged or is it important that it's an, a non-judgmental kind of environment? It's absolutely non-judgmental and it, there's absolutely no direction of, you know, no, no ending, no objective to the conversation other than letting people talk openly about their thoughts and feelings around death, dying and bereavement. And sometimes there's laughter. <sighs> And sometimes there's tears, and sometimes there's just really deep conversations. And Marie, what sort of people, are, and I'm also wondering what sort of ages of people come? Is, is it mostly older people? One would think that, wouldn't one? One, one thinks that, oh, it must be older, um, maybe people with, who, who have got an illness, and absolutely not. We've had, I think, our youngest have, has been 17 and our oldest 92. So absolutely all ages, all backgrounds, all ethnicities, uh, all walks of life coming together to have. And do most people come with some sort of preconceived idea or, or an answer to that very basic question, what do you think happens after you die? I don't think so. I think I think people just come to um, to share their thoughts and feelings, and and what they really appreciate is hearing other people from different backgrounds, different ages, share what they feel and what they th think about death, dying, what happens after it, um, all, all sorts of issues around end of life. And why do you think this is important? I think it's really important because in our society we just don't talk about death and dying. It's this big taboo and everybody considered it to be too sad or depressing, something not to be talked about and actually everybody thinks about it at some point, has an experience of it and really what it is is an opportunity to go through all your thoughts and feelings and share them with other people and hopefully lift the taboo around it more and more. And are you seeing your cafes grow in popularity? Absolutely. I mean, in initially it was a small movement and now there's about eight, 9,000 being run in 65 different countries. So it's really something that people go to um, and really enjoy. Marie, thank you so much for joining us. Fascinating to hear your thoughts. Thank you.